This is part two of my Fabric JS tutorial. We will start by learning about panning in the canvas and talk about basic concepts before hooking up mouse events with relative panning. Then we will move into drawing in the canvas and add several customizations such as color, stroke width, and brush type. Now if we look here, Fabric has functions which allow us to pan the viewport. Here we see that we define the canvas as 500 by 500. But objects can be placed anywhere in the canvas. Object can be placed at position 900, 300, negative 500, 600, or wherever. The idea is what we see in the canvas right now is positioned at 0, 0. So if we pan the viewport in certain directions, we can reveal objects that are located elsewhere. You pass in a point, which is essentially an object with an x and y coordinate. Panning relatively takes your current viewport position and adds that x and y to that position. Now if you pan absolutely, it doesn't care about what your current viewport position is and it will just move your viewport to the specified point. Now by default, the viewport is at 0, 0. So an object placed at 50-50 could be over here. So on mouse move right now we're just console logging but let's try relatively panning. So if we go back to our document, we can see every time this event is fired, we're given this event. If we go into the mouse event and scroll down, we can see more such as movement X and movement Y. We can use this movement X and movement Y and have that be reflected when our mouse moves. Let's try it out. So in this case, we want to use relative panning. So really quickly, if we look here, we have movement X and movement Y passed into this fabric point constructor. Even though we're calling this constructor, I could technically create an object with an X coordinate and a Y coordinate and pass it into here. But the thing is, it's usually a better idea to stick with the fabric constructor, the fabric point constructor, because there are situations where certain methods that you pass the point into will call functions on the fabric point that aren't defined when you simply create an x and y property inside an object. So now if you look here, we're able to move our mouse and the canvas moves with us. But this is kind of annoying. We probably don't want this to always happen. So let's listen to another event. Let's listen to mouse down. Now we also need to listen to mouse up. I'm going to have it so when you press the mouse key, you're able to move the canvas. But you could technically do this with anything. But this seems to be the simplest way to test it out now. Now we can simply add an if statement to check if the mouse is pressed before we actually pan. So I'm moving my mouse and nothing's happening. But by moving my cursor, things are happening. Now this highlighting is probably not what we want as well. So let's look at the fabric canvas class and see what can help us remove this. So this property selection seems to be what we're looking for. So let's go back to the fabric canvas init function and set selection to false.
perfect. That's exactly what we want. Another neat thing to add would be to change the cursor when we pan. So let's go back to the canvas and look for cursor. Okay, so the set cursor value seems pretty promising. Let's try it out. So I'm going to use the crosshair cursor. Now when we're panning the canvas, it currently involves moving the mouse and having mouse pressed at the same time. But I want my cursor to be updated when the mouse is pressed down just so they know they are in the panning mode. So I'll be adding it to the mouse down. Now I'll have mouse up revert the cursor. Hmm, so that's strange. If we look here, mouse down, mouse up, it seems to be working in terms of the crosshair cursor. But when we actually move, the cursor changes. So that's an easy fix. We can just set the cursor when the object is also moving. And that's more what we want. So actually this cursor wasn't what I expected it to be, so I'm going to update it. I'll change it to the grab cursor. Cool, that's what I wanted. So now that we have this basic setup, we want to be able to have molds for our canvas or some way of distinguishing between panning and other actions because here I can simply press left click and move around the canvas but in the future if I had an object on the canvas this panning may interfere with the movement of that object so let's just make this easy for ourselves and create molds I'll start by defining a object that will contain the molds that we will be using this will be an easy reference and easy way for me to make sure I am consistent with the variable names. Well, I would also like to keep track of the current mode, so I'll define a current mode variable. I should also add this current mode check into the mouse move event just so this panning only occurs when we are in the correct mode. Okay, so with this the panning should no longer work. And I'm pressing down, the cursor changes but the panning is not working. So that's a good reminder that we should also add this into the mouse down. So the panning is no longer working, which is what we expect. So now we got to have a way to switch the panning mode on and off. And I'm going to do this by simply adding a button to the template. So 
on click we call toggle pan. Let's add that into our JavaScript file. Toggle on and off is working as we expect. So that's good. Okay, so let's move all these events into its own function. I will call this set pan events. I'm going to pass in a canvas as a parameter. Now I'll just call this function. Panning still works. And now panning is off. Now let's learn about drawing on the canvas. And this is actually a lot easier than you would think. So first, I want to add another mode. Now drawing will be involved with the mouse move like we were using earlier. So we're going to be adding more functionality into this set pan events canvas on mouse move. So let's add a button for drawing. So it seems easier to just make a toggle mode function. So we can just bundle up these buttons and that's what I'm doing here. So I'll be calling the modes.pan and modes.drawing. And I'm going to modify this toggle pan function to toggle mode. Now we can do something similar for the drawing mode. Yeah, so toggling the mode seems to be console logging properly. Okay, so now let's look into how we can draw on this canvas. So I'm going to pull up the canvas class like earlier and look for draw. Let's try drawing. Okay, cursor value used during free drawing might come in handy later. Is drawing mode. That definitely looks like what we want it to be. 
if we put the is drawing mode into init canvas and we set it to true, it would start out in the drawing mode. And I think I want to have this drawing mode start out false. So we can just set this with other properties. So we would have to add this check to mouse move again. And we can just simply add on to here and else if. I want the drawing to occur when the mouse is pressed. And the current mode is for drawing. So this is drawing mode is just a property on the canvas object. And I'm just going to call render all like we usually do. So it looks like the drawings are already occurring. We did not implement the is drawing off yet. So let's do that right now. So what we want to do here is turn the drawing mode off once we set current mode to an empty string. As you can see here, drawing is turned off, but technically everything you draw on becomes an object which you can scale, you could rotate, and move. But let's turn drawing back on. That is what we want. So as you can see here, each object becomes set once we let go of the cursor. And I think the next thing we should fix is this cursor. The cursor seems to be updating when we press downward. And there seems to be some overlap between the pan mode and the drawing mode. Now we should fix both of these issues, so let's start. With the pan and drawing mode, I want it so when we turn the pan mode on, it also turns the drawing mode off. So I can simply just move this into the current mode, mode pan. And then nothing needs to be done for the drawing mode as we have that conditional statement here that checks when the mouse moves. So we can draw and toggling pan, draw, turn drawing off, and we can move the drawings. So yeah, it's functioning how I expected. Now let's get to the cursor part. You can see here, when we talk with drawing, there seems to be some extra clicks we need to make before the drawing cursor changes, and it actually allows us to draw. So the issue here is that we're setting current mode equals modes.drawing in this else statement, and we handle it inside this if statement here. So actually, we could just move this. Now this works as we expect. And the reason this is actually happening is because this drawing mode, when we turn it on, it already expects that the left click is what causes it to draw. So when we actually listen to this conditional here for mouse pressed, it is conflicting with the original behavior of the is drawing mode. So as soon as it is turned on, it checks for us and it can handle updating the cursor to this crosshair. Now, if you remember earlier, we can also change the cursor of this drawing mode. So here's the free drawing cursor. I do like this cursor that they're using now, but if we wish to change this cursor, we can simply add it in into this conditional here by simply adding another property and setting it to our desired cursor. Right now, we're just drawing with the default brush, color, stroke width, etc. It would be nice to add some customization to this. So if we search for brush in the fabric canvas class, it seems like we're not finding what we need. 
we see different classes related to the brush, but still, it's difficult to piece together how we can actually customize this brush in the canvas. This is a situation where I find looking up an example will tell us a lot more about how to customize drawing in the canvas. So I'm just going to look up drawing in the canvas examples. Here I'm just opening the top two links. Now this free drawing demo shows us a lot about what we can do to the canvas brush. And although it isn't written in Vanilla.js, it isn't too difficult to at least extract the properties that they are changing. In the other link we pulled up, we see there's this paragraph about free drawing. The first thing we see is the is drawing mode, which we already learned about and used. It then explains how drawing actually creates a path object. Then it mentions how performing a movement and following it up with mouse up will actually draw the line, which is what we discovered earlier as well. Now this free drawing brush part is new to us. So there are two properties available for customizing drawing, free drawing brush color, free drawing brush width, and canvas instances, so the canvas object itself, has a free drawing brush instance. Searching through the canvas class for the drawing brush or looking for any instances, we won't find this free drawing brush property. And to me, this is very confusing and misleading, but it really highlights how important referring to examples is when dealing with Fabric.js. Let's take a look at the base brush class. It's pretty intuitive, but the base brush class is just the base class where the other brushes, such as the circle brush, inherit from. And if we see here, there are some properties like width, color, shadow, which are common to all of the brushes. Now let's try changing the brush. When we switch to the free drawing mode, I want to change the brush into something else, something custom. After looking at the introduction to drawing, it seems like the free drawing brush is what we're looking for. Now I'm going to add this new brush modifications inside the toggle mode function, right where we turn on the drawing mode. Let's start with something basic. Let's take the existing brush and try changing the width and color. And good, our width and color properties both apply to our brush. Now, I'm going to try changing the default brush into something else, such as the circle brush. Now, based off the properties we have been using, we can infer free drawing brush is definitely some type of brush, so we can assign this to another brush that we define. So we will initialize a new circle brush. And let's take a look at the constructor of the circle brush. So it takes in the canvas object, so let's just pass that in. And I forgot to add fabric to the front of circle brush, so I'm adding that now. And good, the circle brush is working. We can really quickly test out another brush, so let's test out the spray brush. The spray brush switched out properly and works as we expect. And of course, looking at the brush classes, there are far more properties that we can adjust so we can get our desired brush configuration. But this just gives a basic idea of how to configure a new brush. This concludes part two of the tutorial. In the upcoming video, we will add a color picker to our project, learn about how to clear our canvas, add 2D objects, and hopefully get to other topics such as object animations, images, and saving slash restoring the state of our canvas.